So I hope that after two uh, weeks uh, you are already convinced that uh, fundamentalism is not only relevant, important, but also has uh, as a title of our seminar is stating as many faces. Uh, we have in the title of the seminar uh, many faces of uh, religious uh, fundamentalism in the United States, uh, but uh, we already know from our previous discussion that religion uh, is uh, very closely related to politics, to media, to academic research, or to religious institutions, uh, which are sometimes uh, very much uh, fundamentalistic oriented. So already we are aware that we are entering in, in extremely uh, complex uh, uh, field of um, public debate or academic research. And uh, after answering the question, why fundamentalism, which uh, I try to answer with helping of one uh, academic uh, encyclopedic article and one uh, uh, an article written uh, after the death of one extremely influential for 40 years uh, journalist, American journalist, uh, Limbo. Uh, today, uh, I offer you an opportunity to enter in completely different uh, world, but connected with what uh, was already said, namely in the world of academic uh, reflection. I uh, put uh, on our platform two books, uh, so those of you who felt perhaps uh, uh, that uh, reading a sign last time was uh, too uh, small or not, uh, uh, you were not satisfied with the number of pages. So uh, today you have a, a really good uh, choice. Of course, I, I don't expect that for uh, Thursday you will read uh, both books uh, in the entirely, uh, I don't know, 200 pages, but perhaps introduction, some conclusive chapters, just to have an idea how uh, political scientists are uh, reflecting today on the political uh, fundamentalism. Uh, there are some uh, reasons why I choose exactly those uh, authors and these titles, uh, but perhaps in class it will be more uh, clear. One is um, a political um, uh, politologist Sam uh, Rosenfeld, who exactly entitled this book, his book, The Polarizers, Polarizers, and those who are uh, really contributing to, to polarization. And it covers uh, the history, political history of United States after this, the Second World War. Uh, for me, the most um, interesting and exciting are the, the final chapters and the conclusion where uh, Roosevelt uh, discussed the develop recent development in the 21st century. And so uh, I encourage you also to, to focus on, on, on this. And the second book, which I consider extremely illuminating, was uh, published just a few years ago by two uh, politologists from Harvard um, University. Uh, perhaps uh, the authors uh, for now are not so relevant, but the title of the book is extremely interesting, How Democracies Die how democracies die. So they are asking, and they are two, as I mentioned, American scholars, uh, impressed by uh, uh, victory of uh, 
Donald Trump in 2016 and the way how he uh, win uh, presidential elections. So they are reflecting on the mechanism how uh, American uh, uh, democracy are functioning. If this uh, mechanism of uh, check and balances are functioning, why is not working exactly uh, as the founding fathers uh, wrote in the constitutions. And what is also important that both um, experts in fascism, European fascism, Latin American fascism, but they suddenly they discovered that the same phenomenon uh, could be um, detected also in the United States. So the authors Stephen Levitsky and Daniel Ziblatt wrote this together because suddenly they saw we don't have to look for a, a subject of our research outside the United States or in the history, but just now in those very days when we write our book, when we wrote, write our texts, when we taught our students, we see the similar phenomenon phenomena also in uh, in our society. So, so far, I, I read this book as a very illuminating for uh, exactly these reasons. But perhaps, uh, uh, okay, so those of you who will have time and, and uh, perhaps also pleasure to, to read uh, this uh, some chapters from this book will already have their own opinions and will bring into class uh, very important questions about uh, the polarizers or the sources of growing popularization because it will be the topic but perhaps uh, um, it will be not uh, out of order if I will present you some basic questions which we should ask every time when we approach uh, texts, when we approach uh, an article or a book or, or whatever. Uh, why I think that it could be illuminating for you, because I experienced this few years ago when I heard a, a lecture here at our Warsaw University at the um, Department of Oriental Studies, a lecture was connected not with fundamentalism, but with uh, uh, biblical times and how to read the biblical text, the Old Testament. And, um, a scholar was actually an archaeologist uh, uh, who uh, demonstrated uh, how uh, archaeological data and founding uh, are helping uh, to understand better uh, inscriptions and also religious texts. And I found it so illuminating that I asked him, his name is um, Israel F. Al, to send me this uh, five or six uh, questions because I would like to, to share uh, my uh, illuminate, illuminating uh, pro, uh, moment of understanding with my students. So now I'm doing this with you, hoping that also for you as for me, it will help you to better understand the texts uh, which uh, we will read for this class, but also uh, for other uh, meetings and other classes, why not? So these questions perhaps uh, will sound very banal and trivial, but uh, if you be patient enough, you will realize that they are really helpful. Uh, so the first question, when you read something, so please ask, what is the contents of the statement? So what is written there? Why this text was written? Right? What what is exactly there? Is this so in this case, in these two books, is this scientific uh, analysis of certain phenomena? So the the content is the analysis uh, and an attempt to understand. So this is very important. It's different from, as you remember, from philosophy class, from the poem, confession, or philosophical treatise. It's just an attempt to understand 
why certain things are happening, why we have people who are, who are uh, polarizing the society, why we have politicians who are uh, using uh, demagogic arguments, etc., etc. So we are simply observing and analyzing what we have in front of us. Second, who wrote it? Who provided the information? So in this case, in our two books, they are academics, they are professors, they are um, people who, um, who wrote it in order not only to, to make academic uh, uh, degrees, but simply uh, because they have instruments, they have, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, abilities to understand better the reality because they have time, they have a lot of material and they can, you know, use it in order to formulate some conclusions. So in this case it's clear, but it could be a different because if you read in some manifesto or some poem or confession, the purpose of, of a poet or of, uh, of an activist is different. In this case, we detect the purpose of a professor of uh, politology. When? This is very important. In this case, of course, it's obvious, it's written just now. They are reflecting, they are analyzing the material which is uh, available in these years. But sometimes we will read also texts written many years ago, or in texts of the biblical text, thousand years ago. And it's not so easy to sometimes to, to determine or to, to describe this text, but, but it's very important when it was written, so we have a context in which this text was written. Very simple, but illuminating. Uh, four, what is the origin of information, right? From where, uh, whom it was obtained, uh, from whom it was obtained, right? So now uh, we ask the question of, the origin of information. So it was in this case written at the American liberal universities. So we already know these books, these uh, statements are representing a certain uh, liberal ideology. You can agree with it, you can share even it, you can even think that this is the best what we have, but it's one of many possibilities today, right? If it will be written, I don't know, in some Muslim countries, or if it will be published by a Catholic university with some fundamentalistic traces or evangelical university, probably the conclusions will be different. The material used for analysis will be different. So this is very important, the origin, right? So, and already we can uh, not only agree or disagree, but we can say, well, this article, this book is representing a certain position and uh, we take uh, in account that they are in positions like this, but we are aware, and we will study this, of course, in uh, next weeks, different positions, but now we know uh, what is the origin. And now, how or in what form does this information reach us? Again, you have a, a PDF format, uh, so we can say this is easily that this text reached us via uh, internet and uh, hopefully having enough time, having enough cognitive ability, we can analyze, we can discuss with the text, etc. But it's, sometimes it's not so easy if you live in the, in the dictatura or in totalitarian system. So for example, you, you can have illegal uh, uh, books or articles or forbidden authors. 
you know all these are questions which we have to consider uh, in order to better understand the text which we are going to to, to uh, analyze and the last question and i think is very important why was the information created so the purpose of the text right so i will as I said, I will send you this basic question and please keep them in mind and I hope they will facilitate our discussion in class.